I was on my last stream, left off when we were talking about, um, not my stream, my recording, with, um, Hacker Rank, right over here. Alright, I was going for some challenges, because why not? And when I came over here, uh, in solo alone, I'm going to actually answer some questions, okay? So this is the question we are being asked to answer. Alright, so this is um, in basic concept in solo learn for Python because I love Python, it's one of my favorite languages after Java and JavaScript. But then they're, they're my, it's in my top three. The reason I'm not teaching it is because like it's pretty hard. So I'm going to do a solo learn course for you guys, okay, to help you get some answers right. Alright, so I'm in the expedition area of basic concepts. So again, not too ahead, do those parts, and then come here and see how I answer this uh, video. will explain. Alright, so what I did here was if you click try it yourself, um, so this is true of the power of pop, okay? And then you can click, you can either do light, but you know, I'm a dark person, because you sound cheap at OKS. I love the dark with theme. So it's 2 to the power of 5. We're wise to the power because there are two um, ast asters marks. So that's what. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this thing out. Alright, I'm going to blame for 5 to the ratio of the third power. So, so how we did was here, you can change expenses. In other words, you can raise them multiple powers. For example, so this is 2 to the power of 3. So what I want to show is okay, but what if? So there we had two. What if I add? Uh, what if I do this? Two. The power of two. Um. To the power of three. Now click one. I get two hundred fifty-six. What does this mean? Let me make calculator right over here. It means two. To the power, so two to the power of two, everyone knows is four, okay? And um, it's not four to the power of three because that would be sixty-four. It's actually, and it's not true to the power of five either. So you're like, then what is it? It's actually two to the power of two to the power of three. So if you put two, two to the power of two is four. Four to the power of three, which is um. 64, or you have to take that 64 and then you just keep going with that, okay? So let's like answer the question. 5 raised to the third power, this would just be two asterisk marks, so it would just be this. Alright. Next one, exponentian. You can all choose floats and exponentian. For example, the following will result in the square root of 9. Ah, gotta leave. So, this is um, 9 to the power of 1 by 2, which is 3, which is also the square root of 9. So, the square root of 9, that's what it's going to be written as. Okay, so close to an exponential. Okay, 9 to the power of 1 by 2. Okay. Which is 3, which is the square root of 9. So, if you click on try yourself, um, you have to actually have to write the number in, and that's going to be a little bit. I'm just going to delete all this code. And what we're doing? So print. And let's say you wanted to do two, all right? And then you wanted to do the power of one by or unless you wanted to do 10, let's do 10 to the power of 1 by 2, alright, so the, the number 1 by 2, notice how it's in its own bracket, so let's do that, alright, and then we got to close this bracket off as well, like this is, alright, and now click run, see how we get this, 3.16, yada yada yada, um, I think, we're going to do an error somewhere, Hold on. What if I change this number to 9? And now I click 1. Oh, yeah, I was right. Yeah, because for 10, it's going to be a little bit different. For every number, it's always going to be different. Because 
because this is square root of 9, and there is no such thing as square root of 10. There is a square root of 100. On the full screen. Alright, I'll just do f11. Alright, for example, you do 100, and then you'll get 10. Alright, we'll have to answer the question. What is the output of the code 8? Um, Alright, so this is basically saying, take 8, and what's the answer? Like, what's the output of the code? So if you notice, you're like, hey, the answer it has to be 2, right? But which 2? It's always the one with the decimal. Alright? Uh, quotient and remainder. Also, you got this one. The lower division is done using two forward slashes and is used to determine the quotient of a division, the quantity produced by the division of two numbers. For example, print 20 divided divided by 6. So let's run this code. Alright, and let's run it and see what happens. We get 3. Okay? So this is four division. Okay, two forward slashes are the quotient of a division. So you're like, wait, what does this exactly mean? Like, what would it mean by that? And I mean, 20 divided by 6 is 3.333333333, repeating, but what is 20 divided by 6? Is it a, we guess it's a rounded number or what? Well, here it is. The code above will output 3 because 6 goes into 20 three times. What does this mean? 6 goes into 20 three times. Now, this is a whole number, okay? You can all use four divisions. All right, let's see what our answer is. What will this be, okay? This is basically saying how many times does 4 go into 10? Does 4 go into 10 zero times? No. Does 4 go into 10 two times? Yes. Can 4 go into three, um, 10 three times? No, they can't. This is almost too easy. Alright, the module operator is carried out with percents, uh, percentage symbol and is used to get the remainder of a division. For example, print 20% of 6, and alright, so let's try it ourselves, okay? And all numeric algorithms can use with floats, okay? So let's run this and see what numbers we get, okay? So we get 2 for the first one, so if you actually do go and type it on your calculator or whatever, 20, 20% 20 is 0.2, uh, multiplied by 6, well, wait. and it used to get the remainder of a division, so, oh, what's 20% of 6, ah, I see. So 20% of 6 would be this, uh, thing two. maybe it's because that's, um, how many times 6 can go into 2, and how many times 0.5 can go into 1.25, because 0.5 times 0.25 is 0.125, which is a percentage. I think that's what they're doing here. Let's see. What is the result of this code? Okay, now this is a tricky one. This is a little bit tricky. But, and uh, you guys can write it there if you want. Alright? But I want to look at it here, okay? And we're not going to try to get it right, okay? The, the difficulty level a little bit has increased, okay? First, we get 5 divided by divided by 2, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? And then we get a 7%, okay? What does this mean? So if you're like, hey, maybe if it's how many times 2 goes into 5? Let's see, 2 can go into 5, 2 times max, and 7% of 2. So, 7? See, a lot of people get confused. So, for this one, I am actually going to control C, um, delete these lines of code, and I'm going to have to delete the bottom one and the left click one. And we get one. Why is one the answer? Why? Because remember how in this one, um, that's how it was. Okay, so the answer is one. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get into string operations. If you want to create, uh, if you want to use text in Python, you have to use a string. A string is created by entering 
uh, two single or double quotation marks. So print Python is fun. Python is fun. I love Python. Print. Always look on the bright side of the light. I guess so. Alright, so let's tr do try it yourself because I always recommend click the try it yourself button, okay? It's always going to help you out, okay? I don't need those two. You can always ch uh, change which version you want. Let's say, for example, if you wanted to do Java, that's how it was. But we are using Python. There's also Node.js, but there's nothing there because, yeah. Where is Python? Oh, there it is, Python 3. I think Java did come up with a new version of Java. I don't know if it was, was it Java 8 or something. Wait, let me search it up. Java 8 release date. No, no, Java 8's been released. Wait. Newest version of Java. Uh, Java 9 should be the latest version, but I don't care, because right now we're not worried about that, okay? We're not even using Java, we're using Python. So, if you want to use text in Python, you have to use a string. A string, alright, is created by entering two single or double quotation marks. So, if you want to ever write text, you have to use a string, and if you, and a string is created by two quotation marks, you write print, parentheses, and then you get the string created and you can write your text. Alright, so no so if you click run here, this is the input, that's your output. So I can write um coding with Sid and now if I click run and I can write um, so, yeah, so that's, this is fun, though. You can write, always have fun. Not a quick one. Playing with Zing. Oh, yeah. It won't take your spelling mistakes, so. Say it all is that fun. Alright. The delimiter or use a string doesn't affect how it behaves in any way. Okay, so or um, won't help basically. Alright, next. Complete a string containing hello world. Alright, let's get it done. Hello world. And it's as simple as that, okay? You don't even have to. You don't even have to do anything, okay? It's pretty simple. Alright, now we're going to talk about backslash. Some characters can't be directly included in a string, and that's true. There are some characters who can't. For instance, double quotations can't be directly included in a double quote string. That would, this would cause it to end prematurely. Well, you can't, I mean, it's basically less than you can put quotation marks inside quotation marks. Characters like these must be escaped by placing a backslash before them. I call it slash, but they call it backslash, I guess. Um, you can call it whatever you want. So double quotes only need to be escaped in double quote strings, and the same is true for single quote strings. For example, no, we're going to close this now. Leave. Uh, print Brian's mother. He's not an angel. He's a very naughty boy. So let's click try yourself. And let's run and see what happens. Brian's mother, he's not an angel, he's a very naughty boy. So, see where the backslash is placed. Okay, the, ba the backslash or slash is placed after um, the first, um, do you call this apostrophe? Aren't these apostrophes these or quotation marks? Wait, I'm not sure. I think these are apostrophes though. And the slash always comes before the next apostrophe is coming. Right, see? So the one's coming up, put a slash. One's coming up, put a slash. Alright. So backslash can also be used to escape time. Alright. So let's go ahead and answer the question. Complicate the code. 
or complete the code to create a string containing a double quote. Code containing a double quote. Wait, which which code? Oh, which code? Are you talking about this code? Or no, wait. Oh, okay, here we are two things. Oh, complete the code. Well, this is actually pretty simple. Look what we did here, okay? But we didn't use quotations, did we? I want to go ahead, wait. How would a quotation be used? Yeah, quotation would be two. So let's say you did one, you know, in B. Wait. But those, those, those are apostrophes, those aren't quotation marks. I'll put the code to create a string. Oh, what do you want to slash? But there's another character left, and there's a reason why it's being left. Uh, I'll use a hint. Use five points to unlock a hint. Oh, nope. How many points do I have? 43? Nope. String containing a double quote. What double quote are they talking about here? It's even I am stuck. Double quote. What do I mean by double quote? Complete the code to create a string containing a double quote. What string? No, I don't want. I don't want to get it wrong though. I'm even worried about getting it wrong. I want to. I want to know that this is the right answer. Okay. Actually, complete the code to create a string containing a double quote. You want me to write something? I can't write anything. Or can I? I'm just gonna put a slash. Wrong. I can only write. So it's not a slash. Do I write a letter? What do I do? Oh, wait a second. I think I think I've got it. Hold the phone. Complete the code. Oh, I'm, I need a hint, man. Okay. Hint. Where's my hint? Seriously? Oh. Oh, I'm like back, 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 back. I know what the is. It is it two quotation marks? Okay, fine. This is a one quotation mark. Wait, it's not even a quotation mark. Why would it be a quotation mark? Is it this? Oh, come on. What are you talking about? Complete which code? Complete which code? You know I'm not, I'm done with this. Should I quit? Well, that's because I don't do coding in other places. You know, I, th I think I'm done with this. Uh, this, is, this is just way too much for me. Alright. I can leave this though, right? And this won't affect me in any way. Alright, so that's Python. Now let's look at C++. If anyone knows the answer to that, please write it in the comments down below. It would be great, uh, greatly uh, appreciated. Thanks. Let's do C++. 
toothless is popping language. All right. Yeah, okay. So what C++ is, is it's a program is a collection of commands or statements. Below is a simple program template. Okay. I think we know what curly brackets do, right? Oh, well, I don't care about this either. I don't like C++ that much. I do, though, like Java. You know, I mean, who doesn't like Java? Let's get into some of the Java comments I wanted to start. Actually, no, we don't need to learn about Java. Instead, we're going to view all your courses, and we're just going to learn about JavaScript. Because um, JavaScript's fun. JavaScript's like one of the easiest languages ever. Notice how both said only. I can tell you what the right answer is. Alright, creating your first JavaScript. Yay. Now notice here what you guys see. HTML. Alright. Let's start with adding JavaScript to a web page. JavaScript on the web lives inside it, the HTML document. So in p5.js, we were running it on a JavaScript server. We weren't running it on the web, okay? But in order for that to work, you need to write it like this, okay? You need to do the script and tag to define JavaScript. Right? That's easy. This is easy. Output. Well, let's use JavaScript to print hello world into the browser. So let's go to try it yourself, okay? Let's click run. Hello world. That's pretty simple. Alright. Alright, a string into an HTML document or both. It's a document that write hello world. I actually wonder if I can copy and take this into p5.js and paste it under HTML. You guys want to see what happens? Let's do it in um, connect4. Let's go to our, uh, where's HTML? Did I already do something in HTML? Wait, how come I don't have HTML? In? Oh, there's HTML control V. Wait. Document don't write hello world. It actually works. Hello world. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to see what happened. Yes, I'm fine with leaving. I didn't make any changes. I just wanted to do a test. Okay, I think I got it. Please type in the code to output hello world. Well, as used in here, we need to use the word right for this to work. Boom. Just like in HTML, we can use HTML tags to form text in JavaScript. For example, we can output the text as a heading. Okay. Um, so, you can now put everything in the web page in JavaScript. Many JavaScript frameworks use this to create HTML pages. Oh, well, I'm wrong, huh? Ah. Formatting tags. Yeah, well, I think I'm done with JavaScript. JavaScript, you guys can do it by yourself, okay? Now we're almost there. Now we're going to get to C next, okay? Let's look at C. What is C? Learning C. Let's learn C, okay? So where do C applications run, everyone? On the .NET framework.
Notice how you can't type in the word studio. Or you guys can do that yourself as well. Alright, I just want to quickly briefly go over every language. It's SQL. Wow. SQL database. Database is a programming language. SQL. Pause for no case. Right. Show databases. You can just go back and look at it. I'm moving pretty fast. Lay the information in the table. I don't know. I know you're probably wondering why should they watch this, but I just want to see how I can get this done. That's it for me. Uh, let's keep going. Let's do machine learning now. Machine learning. I'm going to start here though. it again okay You can finish that up. Alright, so machine learning seems pretty interesting actually. DS with Python. Hmm. 
fara fallus HTML. This is something that might be interesting. This is probably pretty cool. Hypertext markup language. You guys can uh, do this yourself too. HTML seems pretty interesting. PHP. PHP is pretty much another popular language you guys can learn as well. You know, I just want to get to. I just want to get into the basics of this. Oh, this is pretty quick. And this doesn't take a lot of time to get it done. This is like probably one of the quickest tutorials. So, what is PHP? Uh, free high popular open source programming language fill in the correct character in work. Alright, you can also use We're almost done. Um we might actually finish this. We have a 3x4 here, a 4x4, four four. so we have this and then two more. Yeah, hold on. Yes? Yes, Papa? Uh, after I'm done, then I'll go. Uh, yes? Okay. Alright, I guess I really don't have time because i got to get into my other stuff for the day. Where did that thing go? Oh. What is CSS? Right. The basics of CSS. Alright, you guys can learn CSS as well. I don't really care much about CSS that much. Because it's not one of my favorite languages. It's also a little bit hard to learn. jQuery. I mean, actually, CSS isn't that hard if you know HTML, but... Yeah. Alright, we can look at jQuery. jQuery is actually... A little bit everywhere, I guess. 
Next is Ruby, which is what GitHub was programmed with, actually. So, yeah, you can learn Ruby as well. Ruby is going to take up some time to learn, actually, because you got to actually understand Ruby. These are the more difficult ones. I'd recommend you learn the basics first. Um, Front-end development. All right, and then you can like learn about the other companies and stuff. Then there was this. And then the last one is Swift 4. So I'm going to just go over Swift 4 and then I'm going to uh, end the video. Alright, so Swift 4 the basics. Production. Alright, and that's it for this video, you guys. Um, I'll see you again soon. Who knows? Bye.